Ankylosaurus was a prehistoric tank of the late Cretaceous period that lived in western North America some 70 million to 66 million years ago. This unusual four-legged dinosaur had a squat body covered with bony plates that were studded with spice. At its tail, the plates fused together to form a thick club that the dinosaur could swing to fend off threats. This impressive defense offered Ankylosaurus protection from large land predators such as the Tyrannosaurus rex, which also roamed North America around this time. Would-be predators would have had to flip this armored dinosaur over to reach its broad underbelly, the only vulnerable area of this dinosaur. Possibly the largest known Ankylosaurid, Ankylosaurus is estimated to have been between 6 and 8 meters or 20 and 26 feet long and to have weighed between 4.8 and 8 tons. It was quadrupedal with a broad, robust body. It had a wide, low skull with two horns pointed backward from the back of the head and two horns below these that pointed backward and down. Unlike other ankylosaurs, its nostrils faced sideways rather than towards the front. The front part of the jaws was covered in a beak with rows of small, leaf-shaped teeth farther behind it. Ankylosaurus was covered in osteoderms, armor plates with bony half rings covering the neck and had a large club at the end of its tail. Bones in the skull and other parts of the body were fused, increasing their strength. Ankylosaurus is a member of the family Ankylosauridae, and its closest relatives appear to the Anodontosaurus and the Euplocephalus. It is thought to have been a slow-moving animal, able to make quick movements when necessary. Its wide snout indicates that it was a non-selective browser. Sinuses and nasal chambers in the snout may have been for heat and water balance, or may have played a role in vocalization. Specimens of Ankylosaurus have been found in the Hell Creek, Lance, Scholard, Frenchman, and Ferris formations. Although it lived alongside a nodosaurid ankylosaur, their ranges and ecological niches do not appear to have overlapped, and Ankylosaurus may have inhabited upland areas. The first Ankylosaurus fossil was discovered by a team led by American paleontologist Barnum Brown. They found the top of a skull, vertebrae, ribs, and shoulder girdle piece and armor in the Hell Creek Formation of Montana in 1906. Six years later, Brown unearthed Ankylosaurus osteoderms, which he initially thought belonged to another type of dinosaur. He unearthed his third set of Ankylosaurus remains, including ribs, limb bones, armor, a complete skull, and the first known tail club in Alberta at the Scollard Formation in 1910. In 1947, Charles Sternberg discovered the largest known Ankylosaurus skull. No complete Ankylosaurus skeleton has been unearthed to date. And aside from the isolated bones, armor, and teeth, only three major specimens of Ankylosaurus have been unearthed. Why is this dinosaur so rare? One possibility is that the dinosaur lived upland in environments away from the rivers and swamps that are conducive to fossilization. On the other hand, they may not have been very common in the ecosystem at the time. Ankylosaurus grazed on low-lying plants. The dinosaur's triangular skull was wider than it was long and had a narrow beak at the end to aid in stripping leaves from plants. Its small, leaf-shaped teeth were not designed to break up large plants, and it had no grinding teeth. A broadness to part of its ribcage suggests Ankylosaurus had some sort of fermentation digestive system to break down the massive amounts of unchewed plants it ate. Ankylosaurus seemed to have had a large olfactory bulb or brain structure involved in the sense of smell. So the dinosaurs likely had a strong sense of smell to help seek out food and avoid predators. Assuming it was endothermic, Ankylosaurus would have eaten 60 kilograms or 130 pounds of ferns per day, similar to the amount of dry vegetation a large elephant would consume. 
The requirements for nutrition could have been more effectively met if Ankylosaurus ate fruit, which its small, cusp-like teeth and the shape of its beak seem well adapted for. Ankylosaurids in general, or at least the young, did not swallow their food whole, but employed some sort of chewing. Since adult Ankylosaurus did little chewing of its food, it would have spent less time in the day foraging than an elephant. Based on the broadness of the ribcage, the digestion of unchewed food may have been facilitated by hindgut fermentation, like in modern herbivorous lizards, which have several chambers in their enlarged colon. A prominent feature of Ankylosaurus was its armor, consisting of knobs and plates of bone known as osteoderms, or scutes, embedded in the skin. These have not been found in articulation, so their exact placement on the body is unknown, though inferences can be made based on related animals, and various configurations have been proposed. The osteoderms ranged from 1 cm or 0.4 inches in diameter to 35.5 cm or 14 inches in length and varied by shape. The osteoderms of Ankylosaurus were generally thin-walled and hollowed on the underside. Compared to Euplocephalus, the osteoderms of Ankylosaurus were smoother. Many smaller osteoderms and ossicles probably occupied the space between the larger ones. The osteoderms covering the body were very flat, though with a low keel at one margin. In contrast, the nodosaurid Edmontonia had high keels stretching from one margin to the other on the midline of its osteoderms. Ankylosaurus had some smaller osteoderms with a keel across the midline. The tail club of Ankylosaurus was composed of two large osteoderms with a row of small osteoderms in the midline and two small ones at the tip. These osteoderms obscured the last tail vertebra. The club of the largest specimen may have been 57 centimeters or 22.4 inches wide. The tail club of Ankylosaurus was semicircular when seen from above. Tail vertebrae formed the handle of the tail club. These vertebrae were in contact with no cartilage between them and were sometimes co-ossified which made them immobile. The larger width may indicate that the tail of Ankylosaurus was shorter in relation to its body length than those of other Ankylosaurids, or that it had the same proportions but with a smaller club. It is estimated that Ankylosaurids could swing their tails at 100 degrees laterally, and the mainly cancellous clubs would have had a lowered amount of inertia and been effective weapons. While adult ankylosaurid tail clubs were capable of breaking bones, those of juveniles were not. Despite the feasibility of tail swinging, the researchers could not determine whether ankylosaurids used their club for defense against potential predators, in intraspecific combat, or both. One specimen of Tarkia showed signs of injury on both the pelvic and tail area, and the club was found to be asymmetrical a sign of being worn down by the strikes. The three known Ankylosaurus skulls differ in various details. This is thought to be the result of taphonomy and individual variation. The skull was low and triangular in shape and wider than it was long. The back of the skull was broad and low, and it had a broad beak on the premaxillae. The orbits or eye sockets were almost round to slightly oval and did not face directly sideways because the skull tapered towards the front. The brain case was short and robust, as in other angulosaurines. Crests above the orbits merged into the upper squamosal horns. Their shape has been described as pyramidal, which pointed backwards to the sides from the front of the skull. The snout region of Ankylosaurus was unique among Ankylosaurs and had undergone an extreme transformation compared to its relatives. The snout was arched and truncated at the front, and the nostrils were elliptical and were directed downward and outward, unlike in all other known Ankylosaurids, where they faced obliquely forward or upward. Additionally, the nostrils were not visible from the front because the sinuses were expanded to the sides of the premaxilla bones. 
to a larger extent than seen in other ankylosaurs. Like other ankylosaurs, ankylosaurus had small, phyliform or leaf-shaped teeth, which were compressed sideways. The teeth were mostly taller than they were wide, and they were very small. Their size in proportion to the skull meant that the jaws of Ankylosaurus could accommodate more teeth than other Ankylosaurines. Ankylosaurus and its relatives had winding, maze-like nasal passages, and these biological vents might have helped keep the bulky dinosaurs cool in the heat of the Cretaceous. Various explanations have been proposed since at least the 1970s. Perhaps the air spaces housed some kind of gland, aiding the dinosaur's ability to smell, acted as a resonating chamber, or somehow assisted respiration. But none of these hypotheses fully explained the armored dinosaur's strange noses. The twists and turns in ankylosaur noses make them efficient heat exchangers, allowing these dinosaurs to shed body heat. Large herbivorous dinosaurs lived in warm climates and were warm-blooded. Being able to keep the brain at a steady temperature would have been crucial for survival. And this doesn't just apply to ankylosaurs. Crazy nose elaboration has been seen in duck-billed dinosaurs, such as Parasaurolophus and sauropod dinosaurs like Giraffe Titan. Elaborate nasal passages are part of the dinosaur success story, allowing the terrible lizards to gain sizes that would have been impossible without their own method of air conditioning. While ankylosaur nasal passages helped the dinosaurs keep cool, it is also entirely possible that the different shapes of the nasal passages could have produced different sounds, similar to what has been proposed for the crested duck-billed dinosaurs like Lambiosaurus and Parasaurolophus. Why is the armored tank-like Ankylosaurus almost always found on its back? Paleontologists have puzzled over this belly-up death pose since 1933, and a new analysis shows that these observances weren't just coincidence. Out of 36 fossil Ankylosaurus discovered in Alberta, Canada, 26 were found upside down. The answer to this mystery was surprisingly straightforward, although it involved a touch of physics. These late Cretaceous armored beasts were swept out to sea before they died, where they flipped over, sunk down to the seabed, and fossilized. Before that, researchers came to an idea that ravenous dinosaur age predators had turned over the Ankylosaurus' dead bodies, but only one of the upside down Ankylosaurus had tooth marks on it, indicating that this wasn't the answer. Another idea floated by dinosaur researchers alleged that after the dinosaur died on dry land, their bodies filled with gas as they decomposed. This bloating might have caused them to roll over on their backs.